You've now got 22 days to go until voting gets underway in Britain's general election. And if the polls are anything to go by, the contest will be close. The parties are under pressure to woo undecided voters and to reach out to groups who either feel estranged from politics or who believe their support is and always has been taken for granted. Well, the issues will be discussed this weekend in a debate titled Voting Does Not Benefit the Black Community and Never Has. It's been organised by the Diaspora Debating Association, whose founder, Tessa Joseph, now joins me. A very good morning to you, Tessa. It's a very provocative title. It also suggests that the black community is politically sceptical. Is that true? It is. Um, they are sceptical and most people you talk to would say they don't see the benefits of voting. They never have or even if they have in the past, they, they, you know, they won't um, because they don't see the benefits. So on Sunday we've got um, a debate to talk about the benefits and uh, or non-benefits as it were. Um, we have two teams, so one team will be proposing, saying, you know, there are no benefits, and the other team will be opposing, saying, of course, there are benefits, and, mm. and so we'll have two sides of the sure. argument. But is that scepticism generational, in other words, that you're probably more likely to find it amongst older members of the black community than younger ones? Um, I think that actually the younger ones are very much sceptical. Um, in, in my experience. Um, and these would also include first-time voters as well who are sceptical. Um, yeah, and first-time voters too. I think, um, it's, I think it's generational because um, a lot of the younger people are influenced by the generation before them because of what they've heard, mm. you know, what they've seen. Which is quite and, extraordinary um, though, because if you're talking about the Windrush, the, the Windrush generation, mm -hmm. they had to fight prejudice, they were politically active, they weren't mm -hmm. afraid to go out there on the streets and, and tell the message as it was. Yeah, and I think um, in terms of um, of the next generation, they would have, you know, known that and um, and been more, you know, more prone to voting and, and having things change. But um, there is a lot of scepticism. There's a lot of doubt, and um, I don't think people are as convinced um, mm. that it has changed. Going back to Windrush and asking what are the changes, what are the visible changes. But then, some, if you look at the Windrush generation, they would say, "Well, hang on a minute. There have been changes. The fact that we've got a race relations act, the fact that once upon a time, if you wanted to rent a room or something, there were some rather um, well, racist uh, notices in the windows. No blacks, dogs, or Irish, etc. Mm -hmm. That is now illegal. You've actually." got more black people breaking into professions etc mm -hmm. this has been achieved through activism people working hard to push the message oh yes and and this is what we're expecting the opposition team to come out and say and defend and talk about mm. exactly what you but, just but, mentioned but I, i'm just intrigued mm -hmm. that um you've got first-time voters and some who are a bit younger or so rather older mm -hmm. who probably who feel that there is no point voting because there is no sense of change whereas the experiences of older people would actually contradict that i think I think um, also that um, with the younger generation, it, it's about understanding the political process, you know, being involved, you know, and we do have a young person on, on the panel, on one of the teams, and again, it's just about understanding the political process and, and, and knowing, you know, how to make the right decision, and I think that's probably one of the, the factors affecting, you know, the you know, they're thinking in terms of voting. But there's, but there's no bar on getting involved in politics. It's open to anybody at any stage of their life. So why is there a reluctance to get involved with politics? And I think that's one of the issues that's going to be raised on Sunday because, you know, on a local level within, you know, your local community and borough, it's about involving young people in decision making. It's about, you know, making them aware that, you know, they have a, a right which they need to exercise. They've got a say and their say can influence and make a change, mm. make a difference and um, and so yeah we, we were intending to raise all these issues on Sunday um, and discuss it and hopefully make people more aware that you know things have changed and um, things can continue changing and have a discussion around it so we're not saying you know don't vote or it's just not beneficial at all it's about looking at all the reasons people give for not voting and this and, and, and giving the reasons why we should vote and having an open discussion about it but it's, it's interesting as well because if you if you talk to people casually on the streets and we've certainly seen this in some of the news reports and the vox pops 
the main reason that people are giving for not voting isn't because they don't feel it can affect a change, but it's because of the calibre of candidates who are out there. They don't like the main parties. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the message, but they just feel, well, you know, I don't like them because perhaps um, they, they're from a public school background yeah. and I can't empathise with that or they're all just liars, but there's nothing about them that really ticks the imagination. Yeah, or nothing which is reassuring. And, um, and yeah, that's quite right. I think a lot of people think, you know, politicians are all the same um, or they look at the leader of the various political parties and think, well, because we don't, we're not convinced by him or reassured mm -hmm. by him, you know, or her, then, you know, it doesn't give us any incentive right. to... But it tends to be more of a class thing, isn't it? That basically you can't empathise with somebody because they come from a background which is very, yeah. very privileged and therefore it, it probably sounds a little bit disingenuous when they say, well, actually, I, I feel your pain as a yeah. single parent or somebody exactly. who lives in the council estate or whatever. Because they can't identify. They can't identify, relate, um, and they don't think those politicians can relate to their experience. <laughs> Right, but does that also apply if, for example, you actually have an ethnic minority politician who may not come from a title background, but who perhaps has done very, very well, gone to university, built a career for themselves in the city, and they've gone into politics? Yeah, but then we need more of those people, you know, visible mm. and you know we, we need more of those people actually you know more active in the political arena people who can who can be role models for for you know for younger sure. black people sorry but i was going to say as well though that um in my experience just just looking at the community how it works you tend to find that black people tend to be very active at local level mm -hmm. in councils etc is there a sense perhaps that black people feel they can affect the greatest change at a local level because that gives them the chance to really be involved in their community and to take control if you like to wrest it out of the hands of Westminster um I think I think there is that I think um, and, and and definitely it's been encouraged you know a local level you know getting more involved you know getting to understand you know the, the, the you know politics and and hoping to make a change you know and and you know on the local level start on the local level so definitely it's part of what we're going to be encouraging and discussing on Sunday how to get involved on the local level making sure your your votes count having um, you know decisions or, or helping to make decisions regarding housing, unemployment, everything in, in mm. your local community. But it's interesting as well because, it, it, just very briefly, we, we just had an election in Nigeria. We saw how people got heavily involved in this because they wanted a change. Mm -hmm. America will be gearing up for its election mm -hmm. next year. Again, people getting actively involved at whatever level. And it must be rather dispiriting for somebody like you when you, you actually come, come against a wall of, of near apathy that people don't want to vote and yet you've got, you've got the, the example of Nigeria and Africa with, or, or America where people are getting psyched up for this. Yeah. P I, you know, the thing is people have to realise voting does make a difference. Difference, okay, and I, and I think that I think there is a shift. I think a lot of people are becoming more aware of that, aware of you know that. And I know the OBV um, Operation of Black Vote have mm. been doing a lot of campaigning, a lot of trying to create awareness, and they've got a roadshow going. And I think that there is a shift, and and we're hoping to make it a lot more visible, a lot more effective, so people know that voting does make a difference. And um, a lot of the policies, a lot of the you know the things they want to see change in, can can happen if they vote. Okay, so this debate, very, very briefly, happening this Sunday, where? It's happening in, at the West Green Tottenham Learning Centre in Tottenham, West Green Road. Um, it starts at 5.30. There's an entrance fee of £5, and, um, yeah, it starts at 5.30. Right, and that's in North London. In but North Tessa London. Tessa Joseph of the Diaspora Debating Association. We'll leave it there. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us here. Thank you very much for having life. me. No worries. <laughs>